everyone. Welcome to Sideshow Live. Yay! Yes, confetti is still here. I'm so excited about that. Anyway, we have a very awesome show today, and it's very long. So enjoy the ride right now, because we have Kitty in the house. We have Chicky in the house. We, John Wick is actually out on a mission, so Dennis is currently in YouTube, so chat to him there. Um, we have Brett and Brendan, we have Challenger, and of course, we have special guest Bernie Escoval, who will be here to talk about the Obi-Wan Kenobi premium format figure. Yay, Bernie! We didn't scare him off last time. <laughs> um, we will also be featuring our Batman Dark Knight Returns art print, uh, showing you a feature on the Star Wars Royal Salangar collectibles, unboxing two unboxings. So one unboxing is the Alien Warrior statue, then we will be unboxing and giving away the Jack Burton six scale figure. So that's at sideshow.com slash live contest. You can enter for your chance to win the exact Jack Burton that we unbox on the show today. That is really awesome. Jack Burton, in case you guys don't know, Big Trouble in Little China. Really, really awesome movie. So once again, there'll be a live Q&A at the end of the show, but you can ask your questions throughout because we'll try and answer them as we go since this is gonna be kind of a longer show for us. So let's get to it. Um, first up, we have our featured collector, Shane Sarte. That is, um, look at this, ooh. Oh, so he basically like collects everything. He has a good, healthy Star Wars of all sizes and same with his Marvel. That's really awesome. Thank you so much, Shane, for sharing your collection with us. If you would like to be our next featured collector, head on over to sideshow.com slash blog and hit the apply now button. We love collections of all sizes and shapes and whatever you collect is cool with us. So um, yeah, you could be featured on the live show and in the blog and that's pretty awesome. So news we want to give a huge shout out to our friend todd fisher because he ooh, thank you challenger because he his book was released last like two weeks ago june 5th um but we have a copy in house now it is my girls a lifetime with carrie and debbie and he started his book tour and had um a screening of bright lights at tcl last night and was there signing some books and giving stuff out. So congratulations, Todd. This is such a beautiful, beautiful story. And thank you for sharing it with us. Um, so in more news, I'm just gonna keep this right here for now because it's pretty. Um, in more news, on June 29th, we will be doing our first live Twitch um, exclusive live video. And we'll be featuring sculptor Alfred Paredes who will be sculpting live on our Twitch channel, which um, in case you don't know, is Sideshow Collectibles. Yes? Yes. I'm like looking at Brett who set up Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Sideshow Collectibles. Twitch.tv slash Sideshow Collectibles. And so he'll be, um, he'll be over there doing a live sculpt of one of his favorite Batman villains. So he'll be talking guys through it and it'll just be really cool to see him do some like art live. Um, and of course it's Alfred, so will be pretty fun too. He's pretty funny. Um, you guys, we are a month out from SDCC, but I know, but that means we're like 10 days out from online Comic-Con, which for us, Comic-Con starts July 1st when we start showing you guys teases and previews and RSVPs for what we could possibly have at our Comic-Con booth. And then of course, once we get down to the show, we'll be able to do live streams at the show floor, at the booth, show you all we're, show you what we are doing, including um, some day in the life stuff that we'll be taking over our Instagram story so you can see kind of what it's like to be a Sideshow uh, employee and friend of Sideshow uh, while you're at SDCC. There'll also be live giveaways. Oh, and a, oh, a BB-8. Oh, I didn't know that. We're giving away a BB-8 life-size figure. I like that this is Chicky off camera going like this. And, I, and that's, that's BB-8. So now this is the universal symbol for BB-8. So if you come by the booth and do like this, we'll show you exactly where to enter for the life-size BB-8. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Wow, life-size BB-8. I'm not eligible though, right? Yeah. No, I'm not. No. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Mm. Okay, 
I guess they can live with that. Some lucky person will have a life-size BB. I'm more of an R2 girl anyway, so it's fine. We're going to... Hmm? Yeah, I do. He's cute. Um, we have a short video to show you, and when we come back, we will be showing you the Batman Dark Knight Returns art print. You're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back. This is me pretending that Dave Wilkins is here. Were you guys here when Dave was actually on the show? Dave has like these huge buff arms. So yeah, I have skinny chicken arms. Anyway, Dave Wilkins did this amazing Batman Dark Knight Returns art print. Wow, like actually, did he draw, I wanna ask Dave, did he draw Batman to look like himself? Cause Batman, <laughs> Batman kinda does in this print. Anyway. This is based on the DC Comics miniseries, features Batman and Carrie Kelly as Robin. Um, obviously, mentioned that the art was by Dave Wilkins, and it is hand-signed by Dave and hand-numbered. It is limited to only 150 pieces, and it is an 18 by 24 fine art G-clay print unframed. Framed, it is 23 and a half by 30, um, which you can see right here in this lovely custom frame job that we have. What, what does this mean? Oh, I was like, did I need to turn it? Anyway, it looks pretty straight. Anyway, um, the framed version will be available first for pre-order pre on Friday, June 22nd between noon and 3 p.m. Pacific time, and the framed price is 250. That's what you're seeing right here. If supplies last, and the edition is very low on this, so they might not, the unframed versions will become available on Monday, June 25th between noon and 3 p.m. Pacific time, and the unframed is $90. The short link to uh, RSVP for the pre-order of either of these items is sideshow.com slash dark night returns. That's sideshow.com slash dark night returns. When you RSVP for something, you become the first to know when it is made available. So you're definitely going to want to RSVP for this piece. Oh my God, it's so cool. Really like it. And I think, I think Dave did do a Batman self-portrait. We learned that he was a huge Batman fan. Um, but yeah, Dave... Dave has the Batman arms. I, I would definitely believe that that dude was Batman if he said that. Anyway, um, also, if you guys are fans of our art print program, go to facebook.com slash sideshow art prints and um, click the like button because that's the first place where we do previews of them. That's the first time we put up teasers uh, of new art that's coming. So you definitely want to follow along there. And also when something goes up for sale, they have the links first and we usually share off of that page. So they're the ones with all the art print information. So you're going to want to like that page over on Facebook, facebook.com slash sideshow art prints. We have another video to show you. And when we come back, we have Bernie in the house and the Obi-Wan premium format figure. You're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back.
Hi, welcome back to Sideshow Live. We have Bernie. Hi, Bernie. Hello. Um, Bernie, yeah. I hear you're a Star Wars fan. Eh, yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It makes complete sense to me that we had you back to do to talk about the Obi Wan premium format figure. Yeah. Because like, yes, we loved hearing all about you talk about Green Arrow, but like Star Wars is like his jam. That's my jam. Yeah, yeah. he has all the Star Wars stuff. He um, let me borrow your helmet. The he has like yeah. a custom like like uh, rebel helmet that he made himself that you can wear around. And I might have stolen it and wore it around the office one day. I think, yeah. I think a lot of people did. I think a lot of people have done that too here. So now I just keep it down. I'm like, yeah, whoever yeah, wants to. Yeah, whoever wants to wear it, it's loud. That's fine. So tell us a little bit about um, about Obi Wan Kenobi, the premium format figure. How 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 did you guys decide on bringing this classic, iconic character to life? Well, I mean, you know, original. Star Wars. Original Star Wars. OG. OG. A new hope. Yeah, not even A New Hope, just Star Wars. He had this old man, you know, wizard, if you will, call yeah. him, uh, Jedi master, right? Very iconic. I mean, quiet, yet, you know, we want it very powerful. Very but, powerful. Yeah, you know, so uh, I think, you know, we wanted it to, uh, which I think this is our second one from A New Hope. We had the one that came out years and years ago, mm -hmm. which was still pretty cool. But then this one, much more to me, much more dynamic, yet still, oh, yeah. you know, kind of a stoic museum pose, but at the same time dynamic because of the, I want to say it's the bar scene. Oh, yeah. It's totally the canteen. Which is the scene where it's like. The first time you see he that. He just, yeah. He's basically calm, yeah. but at the same time, he'll take you out like in oh, yeah. a second. It's like, whoop, guess what? Let's just, yeah. Whoa, dude. Yeah. No lightsabers, please. No blasters, whatever. I love it. He just it. does it, you know. <laughs> and it was just one smooth mm -hmm. move. Where and he puts like, it boom, back. Boom, and he's like, let's go sit down. Start. Everyone's like, okay, let's stay away from this guy. Awesome. So, um, tell us a little bit about some of the paints that you used to bring him to life. So this was a uh, a piece that was casted. The the hands and the head were casted in a tinted resin. So a okay. tinted flesh. Oh, wow. Okay. So now that way it takes away me having a base coat of gray resin, flesh color. Mm -hmm. oh, and yeah, sure. um, so I just went in with basically with transparents. Oh, okay. So a lot of transparent and layering. So, you know, I'll go in and do washes of yellow and then I'll do reds and some blues. And then now it's just going in by hand. You know, some, some airbrush was used in, in shading around certain areas, but most of it was done by hand. Wow. Going in and well, adding that answers, eight spots. Uh, did you use airbrush? <laughs> or yeah, it's not like I read these ahead of time or anything. Yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's like you prepped for the questions <laughs> that we were about to ask you. Hmm. Hmm. Um, so what are some of the other Star Wars pieces that you've worked on in the past? Bernie's been here forever. <laughs> so you've worked on a lot of pieces. Yeah. 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 So let's see. A lot of the, oh, the, the Mythos line. So I did the Boba Fett, the Obi-Wan, the Vader. Um, actually, the Bo the Boba Fett was a collab with Anthony Mestas. Okay. Yeah, he did the base and the weathering, some of the weathering on that thing. So that was fun to do. Yeah. And then there was oh jeez, stormtroopers. There's Kylo Ren. Uh, wow. The other ones. There's a lot, right? So you mentioned faders, all the. You also of, mentioned the Obi Wan mythos. What was the difference in approaching that piece as opposed to this piece? Because you're you're dealing with the same character. Um, but like different eras of his development. So mm -hmm. did you approach this one with kind of the same color palette or the same idea in mind or did you Yeah, but then that was also tr uh, that was done in, in just regular resin. So I had to paint the flesh on that. Oh, but then okay. I wanted to give him, cause you know, he's walking in the desert. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of give both portraits like a sunburned look to him, like they've been in the oh. sun. So that's why you get kind of the reds around the cheeks oh, nice. and the forehead. So that was kind of fun. And then just painting all the gear on him. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, and having that robe, which was having to get painted and, and weathered in a way where it looked like it's dusty. And, yeah. You know, kind of um, elaborate so, more on the weathering. With so. that one, you actually got to paint the costume as well. Because this one, the costume is fabric mm -hmm, by mm -hmm. Tim and his yeah. team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, to me, by far, adds much more. Oh, yeah. All the Jedi fabric. If you can get in close, mm -hmm. you'll see some of his costuming. All the Jedi linen, if oh, you will. Oh, the Jedi linen. Mm. Or silk and linen, whatever it is, <sighs> fancy terms. So many blended things right there. So, um, are you excited for the potential of an Obi Wan movie? I am. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to see him. Oh, that's why I said the potential. I didn't say that the the for sure. I said potential. Yeah. It's one that I, the fans really, really want. 
at yeah. least in my opinion. I never, I never thought of an Obi Wan movie, but now that I'm thinking about it, it'd be fun to see what he's been doing between, yeah. you know, his hiding away and his little uh, for sure. Abode. And I, I, I just, um, I liked Star Wars Rebels so much that when he showed up in Rebels, I was like, <gasps> sorry for the little spoiler. <laughs> if you haven't seen Rebels, Obi Wan, I haven't is, seen Rebels. He is in it for a little bit. Yeah. So. I think you'd like it. Um, so Joe Lombardo is asking, Bernie, did you um, have anything to do with the six scale mythos line coming out? I think he specifically asked about Thet, but I want to know about uh, the Obi-Wan as well. No, I did not. No, you that did not. That was uh, Juan Lee and his team in uh, oh, okay. Korea, the cool. six scale team, which did an amazing, I mean, that's like an homage to that piece. Oh, yeah. You know? And to me, that's testament. I'm like, wow, really? This piece is that? popular mm -hmm. it is i even heard popular. i think jj abrams might have one of those something like that like some there's a couple yeah. of people that we've seen it in we're like we see it in publications where we're like oh we're like kathleen kennedy has our ray in, yeah. in her office which is crazy to think about yeah the ray so. that's like mm -hmm. there yeah 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 um, beautiful pieces but yeah i never thought that that piece would be that 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 popular i just painted i was like okay well there's one done so let's move on to the next but now, your work is in the homes of all the great Star Wars Star Wars royalty. Um, does the lightsaber light up? Do we know yet? No, uh, I don't think it. I don't think you it don't does. think it does. I don't think okay. it will. All right, sorry, sorry, Richard. It does not look like the lightsaber will light up. Um, I will measure him for Robert Tremoroli. Tremoroli rhymes with ravioli. That's what he told me. <laughs> Um, so Obi-Wan himself is about 18 and a quarter, and then from the base to the top, he's about 20 and a half. That's, that's that. And then David is asking about the swap out arms that he sees on the table. So <laughs> let me get to this really quick. Um, the collector's edition comes with two swap out arms. So both versions come with the two swap out arms with mm -hmm. the lightsaber and then also this kind of gesturing arm as well. So he's like reaching for the Yeah, he's, he's reaching, reaching, reaching for the for saber. saber. So you, it's almost like a, a motion type reaching arm. So the collector's edition comes with both of these arms. Now the exclusive is the Panda Bob Panda Baba. Panda Bob mm -hmm. Boba? Panda Baba Walrus Boba Fett. Man, basically. This yes. <laughs> So this is the actual exclusive, is this arm and the blaster right here. <laughs> Which I think is a really cool little addition to the whole scene that we've set mm -hmm. up right here. Did you paint these too? No, actually, no. Casey looked at those. Oh, well, that makes sense. He can't, he can't resist a monster part. Mm -hmm. And blood. <laughs> and blood. Gore. Blood and gore is kind of Casey Love's like favorite. So they're, oh my gosh. And doing the cool. research for that was pretty fun. Looking really? All the behind the scenes picks that weren't used. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cool. Yeah, but uh, it's it was a really fun piece to collaborate on. It was really, really, really fun. Now, does the uh, hood come up? Yeah, it can. Oh, okay. Yes, it can come up. Uh, it's got jack. wire. And um, it is, there's a lot of wiring I'm noticing for posability of the bottom and the actual robe itself. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. You're getting asked more generic Star Wars things at this point in the show. So Intergalactic Mojito says, which Obi-Wan do you like better, McGregor or Guinness? Guinness. Guinness. Mm -hmm. uh, you're kind of more like an original Star Wars Pretty guy. Much. Yeah. It's really cool. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and then we want to know, for everyone out there in general, who's your favorite Star Wars character? Oh, boy. That's why I sat back. I felt like this would take a little while. I would say Luke. Luke. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, why Luke? Why, why, why do you? Uh, I don't know. I did just, you think I? I thought you. I thought you were more of a Han guy, but that's just me. No, no, Luke. Oh, yeah. alright. Because it, it kind of reminds me of me, always looking out into the into uh, the sunset or yeah. The, oh, always seeing what the dreamer. Else, mm -hmm. mm, that actually makes sense too. Yeah, and lo and behold, you know, look. As a kid, I was oh, I got to do something that has to do with Star Wars, and yeah, now, and look at what you look thirteen at what you're years doing. doing this, and it's still like. A kid in a candy store, and it's it's really fun. I mean, it blows my mind every time I get to lay my hands on a Star Wars character and paint it up and try to do it justice. You know. Yeah. Cause... In case you guys haven't watched Bernie's um, artist profile in our artist profile series, you get to hear a lot about 
kind of how yeah. you got here. Yeah, it's funny because I always say, well, I like, okay, so I like Luke, but I always want to be a stormtrooper. Like, stormtroopers really? to me are the best things ever. Huh. Stormtroopers, oh, come on. They're the first ones that, enter, you know, that's the first thing you see when yeah. you Yeah. I always, I, R2, from me, I was like, who's that? When he, as soon as he rolls mm-hmm. by, he's like, oh, that little blue guy, he's cool, who's he? Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, so to me, but that, I, I attach to R2, like, right away. Yeah. But stormtroopers, mm-hmm. you keep surprising me because I know how much you love Star Wars. But every time I find out more about how much you love Star Wars, mm-hmm. I'm surprised by it, and I love that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, thank you. There's like layers to your fan. Oh, there and, is. Believe me. And your fan runs deep. Yeah, it does. <laughs> the force is strong with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, do we have any more questions for Bernie coming in? Because if not, well, here I'll give you guys a little bit more of a chance to ask couple final questions so this is um some stats on the figure he pre-orders tomorrow between noon and 3 p.m that's tomorrow what is tomorrow i lost track of the 21st the 21st i lost track of days this week so uh tomorrow june 21st between noon and 3 p.m the exclusive is 550 usd the collector's edition is 540 just a reminder that the collector's edition does come with both swap out arms the gesturing arm as well as the ignited lightsaber arm the exclusive is the Ponda Baba arm and his blaster. So that is the exclusive on him. He is both a combination of sculpt and cut and sew, and he stands on a cantina themed base. Head on over to sideshow.com slash hello there. Sideshow.com slash hello there in order to RSVP for this amazing Obi-Wan premium format figure. So to close out, Ian Thompson has asked, such a great question for you, Bernie. Which of the original trilogy movies is your favorite? Star Wars. Star Wars. A New Hope. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Did you see it in theaters? Yeah. I'm sorry to age you, but did you see it? No, it's in my artist profile. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay, good. What did I say? I said, uh, Which is in the chat right now. Yeah. <laughs> 1977? Yeah. This is when it came mm-hmm. out, right? Mm-hmm. I was seven years old. Wow. Yeah, my brother took me to Hollywood. At the man's. Oh my gosh! Mm-hmm. So I was in line. You know when you see that 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 footage of yeah. people in line. Yeah, I was there, wondering what was going on. Yeah. And you were just blown oh, away. Yeah, that it was the scene. best. Oh, thing. the scroll, and then the you know you and have then... the rebel blockade runner coming overhead, and then the stuff. Yeah, <sighs> I, I wanted to see it again, but he's like, "No, we got to go home." I'm like, I want to see it again. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, he would get me all the toys and everything oh. so during. Like birthdays and Christmas. And That's amazing. Yeah. I love that story. Yeah. So cool. Fun. Well, thank you so much thank for you. being on the show with us once it's again. It's always a delight, you know. Yay. Oh, my God. Yeah. I love talking Star Wars with you. <laughs> so, um, you guys, head on over to sideshow.com slash hello there to RSVP for Obi-Wan. And thank you so much to Bernie uh, for being on the show once again. Thank you, guys. Um, may the force be with you. Thank you. We Likewise, may a, the force be with you. We have a video to show you guys. And then when we come back, we'll have some more Star Wars in the form of the Royal Stalingrad our collectibles. You're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to a special unboxing segment featuring the Hot Toys Praetorian Guard six scale figures. Now we have two of these right now and our friends over at Hot Toys were awesome enough to let us have advanced samples of both of these. So we're just gonna get right to it. Just start unboxing these guys. We're gonna start over here with the Praetorian Guard with the heavy blade. So that's pretty amazing right here. Just gonna open it up like this. As always, there's some sweet Hot Toys box art. And these guys are just really cool to look at. Instructions on the bottom. Remember, all Hot Toys come with very detailed instructions that include things like range of motion and posability. So you're going to want to make sure you read them ahead of time. Since I will not be doing a full posing video, just unboxing, just not yet. Wow. Wow. Look at this slick armor. Oh my gosh, this costume is just amazing. So let's get him onto his base so we can stand him up. He has a Praetorian Guard, First Order, Last Jedi themed base. Let's 
sounds bad, but that's how you have to get the... There we go. I didn't break anything, I swear. So let's just get him standing on his base. Now this is the heavy blade guard. What? Turn him? Oh, ha <laughs> Aw. Sorry, his costume was caught. That's hilarious. This is the heavy blade guard, so he of course comes with the heavy blade. He comes with a lot of stuff, so let's just lay it all out for you. He has two swap out heads. So he has this one and then this one. So two interchangeable helmets with this glossy red armor that just like it stood out, just popped so much. Um, the blade also is a two-piece blade. So, ooh, my bad. You actually can put this together. It's meant to be like this, that long. Wow, good job, hot toys. So over 30 points of articulation. This is the Praetorian Guard with the heavy blade. Six interchangeable gloved hands, including one pair of hands for holding the weapon and two gesturing hands. The weapons include the heavy blade that I just showed you. This is the whip staff. And then also the whip staff in its extended mode, which is slightly posable, as you can see. Wow. This was a cool moment in Last Jedi. So all of these, um, let's move him back a little bit. All of these come with the Praetorian Guard with the heavy blade. Now let's start unboxing his buddy, but first let's move him out of the way. Man, he's so cool. Oh, of course you can't, you can't forget all of his weaponry. Anyway, this is the Praetorian Guard with the double blade. So really, you're, he, these guys are just so, so cool. And that, that scene in Last Jedi, and I know that you all know which one I'm talking about, is a beautiful scene, not just like, not only visually, but just in terms of the whole story of Star Wars is such a beautiful scene. Again, Hot Toys box art, gorgeous box art that it comes with. Get this box out of the way. Instructions, range of motion, all that great stuff. You're gonna want to make sure that you read all of that before attempting to pose. Oh, their, their helmets are different. I didn't really realize how different their helmets really are. Huh. That's very cool. Look at the difference in the helmets right there. Now, the double-bladed Praetorian Guard also comes with a swap-out helmet as well. So you can see that right there. But let's get him on his stand really quick. He also has a different Praetorian Guard First Order Last Jedi themed base. That was a very loud noise. I swear I didn't break anything. Now let's just make sure he stands properly. There you go. Oop, gotta, there we go. Wow, okay. So he comes with, of course, the double blades that have to be put together slightly. So you just slide them together. So you have this nice double bladed weapon right there like that. And he also has, this is his single bladed weapon. So he has a single bladed weapon and a double bladed weapon. Wow, this is so cool. He also has um, his over 30 points of articulation the glossy red armor that you can clearly see right here, and uh, six interchangeable gloved hands, including hands for holding weapons and two pairs of gesturing hands. So, as you can see, these two guys go together very nicely as a set. Let's bring this guy a little bit closer. Sorry, helmeted head. Wow, the heavy guard, like, these are so cool. This has been your unboxing of the Praetorian Guard six scale figures from Hot Toys. Thank you so much to Hot Toys for letting us have these advanced samples. Both of these guys are shipping in July. So if you'd like to order both of them, 
Uh, they each have their own short links, so let me go one at a time. This is sideshow.com slash heavyblade, and this is sideshow.com slash doubleblade. Heavyblade, doubleblade. Um, it's based on the weapons that they carry and that they come with, so that's amazing. Again, thank you so much to Hot Toys. These guys are shipping in July, so Hot Toys was able to give us advanced samples. Um, thank you for watching, and don't forget to let your geek side show. That was an awful lot of me you had to watch there. <laughs> I apologize, but those Praetorian guards, man, they're really cool and highly posable. So if you haven't gotten yourself a set, you know you want to, if for no other reason you have to create, recreate that scene from Last Jedi. That was such a cool scene. Yeah? Yeah. Everyone's nodding, so they're in agreement. Anyway, right here we are featuring Star Wars Royal Salangar collectibles right here. Ooh, I'm going to turn him this way. Did I just wreck your shot? I do that every time. Anyway, this is the Kylo Ren pewter collectible. He is a limited edition of 5,000. And by the way, that lightsaber at the top that you just saw is sharp because there's a cork on it in packaging. And Challenger, we tried to take him out with it, but you know he's one with the force, so we couldn't. He's very, he's very quick. Um, anyway, that joke did not land at all, and everyone's like, what? When did we try to do that? Anyway, <laughs> head on over to sideshow.com slash pewter kylo because he is shipping now and there is low stock remaining. So head on over to sideshow.com slash pewter kylo and get this amazing pewter uh, kylo ren uh, collectible figure in your collection. Moving along to Boba Fett. This is the Boba Fett pewter collectible. He's about 5.9 inches tall, also with low stock remaining. Look how shiny that is. Um, he is shipping now and is only 99 USD. So head on over to sideshow.com slash pewter boba. That is sideshow.com slash pewter boba to add this amazing little, very manageable Boba Fett collectible into your collection. Moving on to this little guy. He is actually a container, so I'm going to show you very quickly that he is a container. So you can hide like spare keys and stuff in there. Um, and we just realized they're working on the roof right now, so we apologize if you can hear that. If not, oh well. This is the BB-8 pewter collectible, and like I just showed you, he has a removable dome head, and you can hide stuff in there. So it is like a little Christmas... Yeah, and he's really great too because he's somehow balanced, but you can still kind of roll him. See? Anyway. Uh, he is 3.5 inches tall with low stock remaining, and he is 129 USD shipping now, so you could have him in your collection very, very, very soon. Sideshow.com slash pewter BB8. Sideshow.com slash pewter BB8. We have a quick video to show you, and when we come back, we will be unboxing the Alien Warrior statue. You're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back. I'm giving it some bug hugs, right? That's what you do with aliens. You hug them and then they don't hurt you. Little known fact. I bet Whi uh, Ripley wishes she knew about the whole bug hug situation. Anyway, we have a production sample of the alien warrior statue from the movie Alien. So we are going to take him out of the box. And this might be very difficult. So, oh, look, assembly instructions. I will need those in just a second. But, uh, hey, Challenger, you want to come help? Um, there we go. Awesome. This is the bottom, so I'm just going to flip it over. Now, remember, with these big premium format and statue unboxings, the Sideshow S should be on the top. So if the Sideshow S is not on the top, make it so. 
That way you can open it like this. And look at these assembly instructions. First we're going to take out the base. Ooh. Take the body out first. You have to take the body out first? <gasps> You're right, you do. Challenger, would you sure. mind coming and holding this? Because I don't want to place it. And then the tail is fragile. There you go. You want to do the honors? Absolutely. You have to be careful of the tail. Yes, the tail is very fragile, guys. Remember, this is the statue with the elongated tail. So that way what is, it... What does the instruction say? The instruction says to kind of... Oh, you I think can... we got to remove the tail you first? Have to rem nope. How do you do nope. it? Brendan, how do you do it? Instructions Yeah. Yeah. Well, it just says a lift, and then there's an arrow, and it's kind of... He did the unboxing. He did the unboxing. But actually put it together for the video. See, this is why you have help sometimes. Goes around. Oh, okay, so you kind of do a loop like that. Mm -hmm. I get it. And it goes right in there. How so many sideshow employees does it take to put together an alien statue? Should just go. Well, there. actually, one because I'm not really helping. Yeah, here we go. There we go. And then that it takes two. Goes there, and then on the back, there's a key for the tail. Oh, oh, I see. It's right there. Get in there. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. There we go. Got it. Boom. Boom. That is the alien warrior statue. He is all sculpt and has a very H.R. Giger aesthetic with an alien environmental base that, as we learned from production manager Anthony Mestis, is meant to mirror the queen's crown. Wow, that looks really, really cool. I understand the instructions now that I've seen it because it's telling you to wrap the tail around like at an angle. Anyway, uh, this piece is limited edition to only 1,000 and has a detailed type. Like, look at the details on the skull and all the places. I'm going to move him closer. Or her. Him. him. I like the purple on the skin. I do too. There's so I like the translucent type paint job on here and all of the kind of organic looking elements. Um, he is shipping between June, which is now, and August. And if you head on over to sideshow.com slash aliens, you can still get one for yourself before they start shipping, since this is a production sample. Um, he is 465 USD, and like I said, shipping this summer. Sideshow.com slash aliens. This one, or one very similar, from the production run of only a thousand, could be yours. Sideshow.com slash aliens. Wow. What a cool piece. So we have another video to show you. When we come back, we'll be unboxing Jack Burton from Big Trouble in Little China and giving him away. So you're watching Sideshow Live. We will be right back. All right, second unboxing, unboxing two of two. This is the Jack Burton six scale figure from Big Trouble in Little China. 
first off, can we just appreciate this amazing box art? It's so crazy, like on brand for Big Trouble in Little China. Like, oh look, it's kind of bonkers and because that movie's totally bonkers. It's like this stuff happens and then this stuff happens and Jack Burton just keeps getting thrown in there. Um, now that you've appreciated the amazing box art, I'm gonna wreck your shot and open it up. Ah, so amazingly cool. Now remember, we are giving this exact one away at sideshow.com slash live contest. He comes with kind of a, a sleeve, so to speak, that is wrapped around the six scale figure. So many cool things. Oh no, his knife tried to break free. That's a very naughty knife. Um, oh my gosh, look at this. It's Kurt Russell. Look at this, 80s Kurt Russell right here. Oh, and he stands up pretty well on his own, but he does come with, oh my God, I forgot he came with the Guardian. <laughs> That's amazing. JJ Joe's asking if uh, Jack Burton paid his dues, and I would say yes. Does someone have a knife to cut this tape? Where's the, oh, where's the Brit when you need him? Oh, I got it. <laughs> Dennis has the dad knife. Big trouble in little China. Look at this. Okay, so here's how the stand works. Jack Burton stands on this stand. And then the Guardian. The Guardian stand kind of goes into this stand. Mm. Mm. Okay. How do... Hey, Challenger. <laughs> Just slide it off. I'm trying to like not break the stand, but these holes need to be punctured. So that way the guardian. And <laughs> <laughs> we got it all on camera. <laughs> this is why if we keep him around, because he can do. He's it's all in the reflexes. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, all right. Oh my gosh. This, which by the way, this whole movie revolves around um, people having green eyes, and then we were watching it with the Brit, and we realized that, oh look, the Guardian has green eyes. Why didn't he qualify to break the spell? Just wondering. Just wondering. I'm sure you guys have an answer for that, actually. Um, okay, well that hand won't exactly hold his knife. These are not the correct hands for holding knives. He comes with swap out hands, including a set of fists. These are the relaxed hands. And then he has a hand for holding his gun and a hand for holding his knife. So I'll just show you this like this. That's one of his swap out hands. There you go, to hold the knife. Remember, someone could be potentially winning this at sideshow.com slash live contest. You can win the exact one that challenger schooled me on how to unbox. <laughs> so it's, that was pretty amazing. So now I'm gonna put the gun in his hand right here. And then you have this, see? <gasps> Look, yeah, it comes with a clip. It does come with a clip that I didn't put on the gun, which is why I'm like, that's not what the gun looked like in the movie. Um, much better. There we go. And then these are his fist hands because obviously Jack Burton does a lot of punching to save the ladies and to save the world. So head on over to sideshow.com slash live contest to enter for your chance to win this exact Jack Burton. Or um, if you would like, head on over to sideshow.com slash Jack Burton because he is shipping now. His edition was only 1500 and he is $239.99 USD. And like I said, he has the Guardian, he has um, a knife and his swap out hands, and he has his submachine gun. And he is just a really, really cool figure, including this likeness of Kurt Russell with his six scale clothing. <laughs> I think the shirt, is really cool the shirt is so cool. And then the boots are so cool. 
Like, it's exactly what he looks like in Big Trouble in Little China. It's crazy. And I hear the Brit is in the Facebook chat to talk more about how much he loves uh, Kurt Russell in general, but Big Trouble in Little China is his favorite movie. And so he probably has all the quotes. He does have all the quotes. He can quote along with you guys, and he also got one of these himself and spent an entire weekend like posing it and making different scenes from the movie with it. So you can ask him about that. Speaking of asking questions, we have a brief Q&A since this show was very, very, like, just packed full of content. We will have a brief Q&A after this video break. And that, this is our nerdy Q&A where you can ask us all the fun, geeky questions that you want to ask us. And then, yeah, that'll be it. So uh, <laughs> last video break. Um, and we'll be right back. You're watching Sideshow Live. It's all about the adventure of working with the colored liquid. How do I get this colored liquid to do what I want it to do? Painting in really small scales is an interesting an approach. It starts to become more about the general aspects of the piece and it becomes about high contrast pop. It's sort of a less is more kind of an effect. If you get the blends right and you carefully picked out the details, these small miniatures become about shock value. Can you, across the table, see that thing just because of its high contrast shadows, then it's like, wow, that tiny little inch and a quarter piece is captivating my imagination from like four feet away. Playing Court of the Dead, Mourner's Call gives you the big picture. That was the evolution. Working on this board game has come full circle to bring the world that I've worked very hard on, but to actually then have some of those sculptures miniaturized down and on the table, so that they are a big part of the play. It's, it's an unbelievable deal, and I couldn't be more excited. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sideshow Live. We have a couple of questions coming in already, um, including who has Ant-Man and Wasp? To sp <laughs> First question, I'm already done. I'm already done. Bye guys. Um, who has Ant-Man and Wasp tickets? Fail. <laughs> Wasp is like one of your favorite top characters, and no, I have mine. I'm going to the fan event at AMC. Pretty cool. I went to the fan event for The Incredibles 2. And got the sweet like little print that they handed out to everyone. So, um, yeah, fine. I'm the only one. Okay, moving on. Moving on. Yeah, Michael Lampkin says no spoilers, but what did you all think of Incredibles 2? So good. It was totally worth the wait. I don't want to wait 14 years for Incredibles 3, but I would. No. I mean, I would. I would wait forever for the Incredibles. It, it, it makes you question why they made other movies before. Yeah, why did you guys make other movies? So this should be the only movie. That short film before, too. Bow was so, so good. Cute. Oh no, I cried like that whole short. I was like, <laughs> I love eating bow. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I loved Incredibles too. It was so good. Dash reminds me of. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Chicky knows. Da Dash reminds us of someone specific <laughs> that Chicky knows too. Um, cool. Did anyone else see Incredibles too besides the three of us? No. You're going tonight? Dennis is going tonight. So we'll we'll expect a full report tomorrow. So that's cool. You got it, dude. You got it, dude. Um uh okay. Kit uh Quinn St. Kitts says, What about Jurassic Park two days you mean Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom? There is no park. There is no park anymore. Um yeah, I have tickets to that. I'm going. I love dinosaurs. I love dinosaurs. I'm we were watching Luke Cage on Friday. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Luke Cage comes out on Friday. Uh, when is, is Glow next week? Glow is next week. Glow is next week. So it's Kitty's like out for the rest of June. She has <laughs> Luke Cage and then she has Glow and she's done. Um, I'm going Monday. You're going Monday? My anniversary. For your anniversary. Are you going in Hawaiian shirts? Probably. That's amazing. 
Um, I got a shirt that says, Dinosaurs Eat Man, Woman Inherits the Earth, so I will be wearing that. <laughs> Direct quote from Ellie. Um, but I also went to like, I'll also sideshow Alex went and saw on the exact 25th anniversary, so June 11th, she went and saw Jurassic Park on the big screen, which I thought was really cool. Um, and that's Challenger's favorite movie, is Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. Speaking of movies, what is everyone's favorite Kurt Russell movie? This is actually something that you would be surprised how often it gets brought up in the office. <laughs> we all talk about our favorite Kurt Russell movies constantly. Mine is Tombstone. I was going to say Tombstone. Tombstone. I like the coat. You like the coat. Oh, in Tombstone, I was like, I was like, I have never heard of the movie called The Coat. He wears an awesome coat in The Thing as well. Uh, the Thing is mine. The Thing is Kitty's. I'm with the Brit. You're with the Brit, Big Trouble in Little China? All right, that's fair. Tombstone. Tombstone. No one says Guardians 2, huh? The Thing is good, too. The Thing is really good. Yeah. Yeah. Captain Ron also. <laughs> Captain Ron always gets brought up somehow. It's so so strange. Um, yeah. Brendan, are you even old enough to have seen a uh, Kurt Russell movie? Uh, <laughs> You've never seen Tombstone? No. We're going to have to screen oh, Tombstone for you. Okay. Oh my gosh. We have people on Facebook saying Escape from New York. Escape from New York is so good. Stargate. Stargate is also good. Hateful it's Eight. Got a, lot, got a lot of people in Facebook. Is Hateful, is that Ricky? <laughs> no, it is not Ricky. Okay, <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> Escape from New York is so good. Death, Death Proof. Captain Ron. Captain Ron. I weirdly liked that movie. Probably at an age where I should not have. Anyway. Um, there's young Kurt and there's more mature Kurt. Aged Kurt. Right. If you follow the Brit on his Instagram, he put a picture of Kurt Russell in his Insta story and just wrote perfection <laughs> at any age. And then I was like, <laughs> I'm going to embarrass him. He doesn't like when we talk about him on the show. Anyway, uh, with such a huge, Mark, this is uh, Michael Stark wants to, uh, is asking, with such a huge catalog of amazing products, how do you decide what you will show at SDCC? Rock, paper, scissors. Um, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it, it's what we, what's new. A lot of it is new, things that have never been shown before. It's our first chance to show you guys a lot of our newer collections that have not been out and about, um, secrets that have been in the office, but that we haven't let out to the public yet. Stuff like that. I guess that's how we decide. We'd like to show collections together, and it's a really good chance to show you like everything in the Star Wars PFs and stuff like that. Yeah, but mostly there's like a committee, and then you know they put solar panels on the roof and ruin our show. Um, <laughs> so, what property would you? Batman statue collector says, what property would you like to see brought into a Disney park? They're kind of bringing them all in at this point. Like with Pixar Pier opening, they have Pixar, then the Marvel Land, Star Wars Land. What else are they going to bring in? Show Deadpool. Deadpool? Well, they're just now they're acquiring Fox, so maybe you'll get Deadpool in the parks. Right. Oh my God. If they bring Deadpool in the parks, can I go with you when you go see him? Okay. Disney after <laughs> I want more Disney afternoon properties. What? I like nostalgia. Nostalgia aspect really gets me. Yeah, but Deadpool would be really good. Doctor Strange is in the parks for the summer, so I have to go find him. I was asking, I was, I was like a really creepy person <laughs> and walking around California Adventure going, has anyone seen Doctor Strange? And it, like the cast members were like, who is this girl? <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, Top Gun 2, the starting principal photography? Top Gun 2? That's the one where... Cruz and Kilmer are now teachers, yes? Yeah, they're instructors at the flight academy. They're instructors, so are there going to be some new hot shots that they have to deal with? I don't know. I'm all about the call signs, so. But you were talking about 80s I have, uh, I love. Songs earlier? Take my breath away. There you go. Or, Chris Pine. 
Yeah, just throw Chris Pine, Pine in it. That would be awesome. And he has to parachute out of some place yeah. and land on. No, we already had a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll do a parachute scene. <laughs> Ever again. Um, but I'm all about the call signs, so I want to hear these, you know, Maverick and Iceman. They're so, like, iconic. Goose. Goose. I was like, I remember watching that being like, what? What? Yeah. But yes. Uh, that soundtrack is like super great. Okay. Danger Zone. Robert Tremoroli wants to know what would your call sign be, Susan? I don't know. You don't make up your own call sign. <laughs> Someone gives it to you. It's probably something really stupid. Trash Panda. <laughs> I was like Trash Panda, probably, or like the Brit calls me garbage person, so. <laughs> so it'd be like garbage <laughs> requesting a flyby. Um. So hopefully it would actually be something better than trash panda or vermin or garbage. Yeah, hopefully though. Who knows? Um, cool. Who in the room has got the Hot Toys Yondu when it arrives at the end of the month? Susan does. Me. I did. I did. I'm really excited about it. Do you have ideas on how you're going to pose it? I, I do, but I, I have to leave it at my desk because, like, if Rooker decides to crash the live show again, I really want him to break mine. He's fun. He is fun. He's That's Hurricane cool. Rooker. He just comes through and plays with everything. Unpredictable. He's unpredictable. That's like, uh, who was it? I think it was James Gunn on his Twitter, like, called him Hurricane Rooker or something, and that's, that image stuck in my head because it's accurate. It's very accurate. Wow. Ooh, a good one for me? Coming in, incoming, good question. Now we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait, and we're gonna stare at the monitor. <laughs> oh my God, Cody Edwards wants to know everybody's go-to karaoke song. <laughs> uh, Kitty really likes karaoke. <laughs> um, I don't have one since I won't karaoke because I suck at it. <laughs> I'm really bad. Let's see, uh, Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. You sing Backstreet oh. Boys. <laughs> I want it that way. The Beatles, Yellow Submarine. The Beatles, Yellow <laughs> Submarine. Wow. That's all. Separate Ways Journey. Separate Ways Journey. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Mine used to be Hit Me With Your Best Shot. <laughs> Um, now you just do screamo death metal, right? Now, now I just scream death metal like Agritsuko. Yep. I feel like Chicky has a go-to karaoke song. What is it? I have to admit that I've been um, singing the song that Tom Cruise dances to at the end of Tropic Thunder. Oh, like, my <laughs> God. <laughs> Apple Bottom Apple Jeans? Bottom, no, the other one that has a lot of curses in it. Oh, my God. I'm pretty sure... Isn't I don't I just remember apple yeah, bottom I jeans. <laughs> I, was, I was actually pulling into the parking lot and I was blasting. Oh my it gosh! I forgot I had it that loud and the construction crew was screaming. What is going on? That's um, amazing. That's amazing. Facebook is chiming in. We've got Country Roads. What's going on by Four Non Blondes? Uh, sabotage Beastie Boys. Oh my gosh, Sabotage is a good one. So Kitty and I like to do. Karaoke. Yeah, we have to do sideshow karaoke sometime. Um, and Kitty really, Kitty and I like to mash up songs. <laughs> so we mashed up if uh, like, do you think I'm sexy with Go Your Own Way, <laughs> and it became like a thing that we do in the office now. Oh, we we can't be a one-hit wonder. We gotta Sideshow live karaoke. Dude, that would be fun. Oh my god! You guys want me to play video games and karaoke? I think you might have to pick one or the other. <laughs> it's two things I'm really bad at. So one or the other, guys. Yeah. I think I'm allowed to be bad at video games, too. I think everyone's allowed no, to be bad at things. <laughs> um, awesome. Well, you guys, we had a great show. And, you know, if you want to do Sideshow Live karaoke, maybe we can talk about having an, a non-Wednesday episode do, doing that, potentially. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but 
Big thank you to Bernie for being on the show today and talking about the Obi-Wan premium format figure. That thing is gorgeous. Please pre-order it tomorrow. It looks oof, stellar. Uh, we featured the Batman Dark Knight Returns art print. We showed you the Star Wars Royal Salengar collectibles. We unboxed the Alien Warrior statue with a little help from our friends. Uh, thank you to Challenger and Brett for um, basically doing it for me. I don't really think I did anything to unbox it. So thank you guys. Um, then we unboxed the Jack Burton six scale figure and we're giving him away. So head on over to Sideshow.com slash live contest for enter, to enter for your chance to win the exact Jack Burton that we unboxed on the show. So um, be sure to keep up to date with all of our live doings at sideshow.com slash notify. You can get notified every time we go live. How about that? Um, you're actually going to really want to turn on those notifications come Comic-Con season because we're going to start going live a lot and you're not going to want to miss any of that um, because it's fun. So of course, we have the after party with Kitty that will be happening right after the show. Um, that's over on Instagram. So Instagram.com slash Sideshow Collectibles. And we'll be back. Same time, same place next week. So thank you all for watching. And don't forget to let your geek sideshow. Thank you guys for watching. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to How to Be a Poser. Today, we're going for epic heroism. To do that, we're going to be using the Hot Toys Anakin Skywalker six scale figure. Let's get started. Okay, here he is, Anakin Skywalker, the Chosen One, still in his box, exactly as he's going to come to you. He comes complete with a nice array of accessories, including these two switch-out right arms, a full assortment of hands, both gloved and ungloved, and two lightsabers, Anakin's own blue one and Count Dooku's red one. Really stoked to see what I can do with this thing, so let's get rolling. All right, here's Anakin, right out of the box, ready to roll. Uh, there are a few elements here that I'm going to be removing. I think for this first pose that I'm going to do. As magnificent as this cloak is, and I'll readdress it later, I think for this opening thing that I have planned, I just want to have him in his Jedi taverns. We're going to use the lightsaber, and we want that lightsaber to light up. It appears I'm going to be able to pull this sleeve up enough to actually work with it. Okay, I'm not quite sure how this is going to work, so I'm going to grip this thing tightly and then just pull and out it pops. Okay, the next step in this process is we want to get the batteries in here to power Anakin's lightsaber. Get that battery, get that screw out, rest it someplace where you can see it, don't lose sight of it because as soon as you do, it's gonna disappear. Three button cell batteries, boom. Drop the first one in there. The second one's gonna be a little bit more snug. So just get it part way in and then shove it in the rest of the way with one of your fingers and the third one is always the tough one once you have the batteries all the way in then get that door back into place take that little screw and carefully again as i've said before don't tighten that all the way down you really don't want to strip it you want it to come out easily when it comes time to remove the batteries now that we've got that all taken care of Anakin's in good shape. All oh, these tablets are wired. That's actually really exciting for me right now. All right, that's very, very cool. We've got that on. Um, I actually never did a power check. I'm gonna do that right now. Check it out. We're good to go. All right. All right, this is kind of exciting. This figure's moving along even faster than I anticipated. I knew that it was gonna look cool just because of the photographs that uh, Hot Toys did of him. All right, we got the lightsaber in. That's half the battle. We're gonna do a little bit of a force gesture slash combat pose. So get that hand in there. And this is the part where I can throw away this stand because everything going forward is gonna be bent on trying to find that balance. Look how awesome this is. You've got, there are wires all over this costume. You can do so much with every element of this costume. They really pulled out all the stops. Okay, so I'm thinking that Having the arm back, like he's just finished some sort of a flourish. I really want to go, I really want to take this one to the next level. I want to contort his body in a way that suggests some really intricate saber work. 
So you see that I've twisted. This almost looks unnatural, but at the same time, it looks almost like a like a dance. I'm suggesting some fancy swordplay, fancy fancy footwork going on right here. Like he's just completed a saber flourish, and he's going to be using the force to do throw something at his opponent, what have you. The tricky part is going to be because of the way that I've got, well, so much of that. I was going to say the tricky part was going to be finding balance, but this figure is pretty solid. One thing that I like to do is actually just get down and look at it just so that I can make sure that Anakin's got some kind of a natural line of sight going on there. And in this particular case, it looked like he was looking down. I also didn't like the angle of that hand. I want him to be like he's pushing something away or throwing something away or using the force to deflect. The only thing that I don't like is the, the angles that are coming out of the tabard here, out of the sleeve, so to speak, of the tabard. And that's just a simple adjustment of those, of those wires in there. Once you do that, you can get the curvature of it to, go, to conform more to his body. Only thing left to do at this point is that. And there it is. This figure clearly represents Anakin at the beginning of Revenge of the Sith. He's still the hero fighting side by side with the Jedi against the Separatists and the Sith. The darkness is there, but it's buried beneath a veneer of heroism. It's still fermenting. So keep that in mind when you're working with this figure, and you're sure to hit something that resonates with that fantastic blend of darkness and heroism.